Welcome, everybody, to patch OB46. I am Ron Jobbert, and I have with me Thomas Holt, lead art director of Paladins. I'm actually extremely excited because as an art student myself, I love the design of the game. It's very clean. It's honestly really fun. A lot of fun, actually. And honestly, just getting right into it, let's talk about the brand new skins this patch. Awesome. Let's start with my personal favorite. Even though it's the first one, I'm not cheating. It's just my favorite. FN01 Helios Fernando. I want to just start with your first opinion of this skin. What was this idea? What was this concept? Did you, you looked at the concept art and said, this is it? Yeah, um, so th this skin has been really popular internally within the team. Uh, for the art team, you know, we've got a lot of sci-fi fans, uh, a lot of people who come from sci-fi gaming and uh, just media in general. And so the idea of doing a mecha kind of skin for Fernando has been something we've been tossing around for a long time, and uh, this skin gave us opportunity. I can really see that you guys had a lot of fun with this, cons considering that a lot of this skin is completely different than what you'd expect from a Fernando skin. Yep. A lot of this is really cleaned up. I would not expect, because when you think of Fernando, you say, I'm in love with him because he is the most suave man. He has the voice that it makes me weak. I'm weak now thinking about his voice pack. But this skin covers his face. This skin gives yep. him a, a pilot mask. It gives him a, a voice pack that is, that is lo-fi because of a walkie-talkie quality, uh, a dual barrel roll quality. Tell me about covering his face, and was that even a, an issue to decide? Is it, what, what's going on with that? Well, it's one of the things we definitely had to look at. Um, as you know, with base Fernando, uh, he has a helm that can go up and down and lobby, uh, but it's presented down in game. And so it's one of the things technically we had to look at is whether or not we could do a skin that was basically down all the time, uh, which was important to us for this theme. Because with the theme, again, lots of fanboys on the team itself. Uh, we, a lot of different reference that we looked at for the shape language, for the color. Uh, we wanted that kind of like, um, if you look, there's there's like battle scars on him and everything else. And we really wanted to just sell what we felt was the heart of the skin, which is this giant mech with a pilot inside. And so that carries over the voice pack, carries over to the visuals, um, is VFX, the whole nine yards. I love it because there are so many ventilators, you know for sure that's, that uh, suit is very hot. It's very yeah. hot inside and he's he's upset about it. So I want to move on, over and out. I want to go to Maldamba's new skin, this patch, Chancellor. Yes. Now, while Damba is a has a Haitian voodoo doctor quality to him, he does. Why did the art team decide to bring him? He gave he got all new duds. He got brand new boots, new gloves. He's he's dressed up and he has a brand new voice. He has a British accent, very very topical. Tell me about giving Maldamba a a new chance at being this fancy guy. Well, I think that's that's really the joy we get in skins, right? Uh, we want to make sure as we're developing champions that they kind of fit into. The overall world and universe that we're creating within Paladins. Um, they're very strong characters. You know, they're a lot of fun. And um, there's a lot of depth to them as champions. But skins give us the opportunity to play outside of that. We get to play what if, right? We get to play against like popular cultural kind of icons and ideas. Right. We get to, you know, kind of play fan service. We can go funny. We can go humorous. Uh, we can do things outside the main character. And so uh, for Maldamba, it's, it's a little bit different because it is kind of a twist. Like if you look at a lot of his animation and a lot of his, uh, you know, base way that he moves and, and deals with uh, the different elements inside the game, he almost has a magician kind of quality. The way v very he poses upright. himself and holds himself. And so he's not as big of a departure with this kind of like British Victorian yeah. kind of uh, kind of vibe to him, but um, but it is definitely a different twist from what we've seen in Core Madaba. Um, and then the snake is I can't believe you I love the snake. The, the snake is amazing. So uh, yeah, so early on uh, from the sketches we saw it, we knew we had to have it, and then um, from looking at the art, uh, working with the design team with our uh, audio group, um, the the voice pack definitely goes into that. So. Uh, if you're going to sell a new character, if it's going to be a new personality, if it's going to be basically a whole new you know, opportunity for the player to play a different person kind of in that role, um, you want to make sure that the voice is, uh, is different as well. You are not wrong at all about that basilisk, considering those, those bottom teeth are even scarier than the regular basilisk. It's, it's, I'm thinking about it now, and I started shaking. I'm very sorry. Yeah, the, the weapons team did an amazing job. Uh, we have an artist named Paul uh, who worked on the snake. Um, he worked on the original as well. Um, but the way he was able to kind of translate that across with some of the technical limitations we have and, and get that um, kind of mechanical look to the snake and right. kind of really sell it uh, with that look was, was, was inspiring. So enough about making money and looking and making things look good. I want to get into the balance changes of this patch. There's not a lot, but they are, they are very important right now. Makoa, Ancient Rage, his ultimate, 
he is no longer CC immune. That's right. If you are a character that gets run toward by a Makoa, at some point you you see him glowing that that CC immunity uh, gold, and you just there's nothing you can do. It's almost like you take your hands off the keyboard and you say it's not up to me anymore. Right. So so you can do a little, even with a Maldamba you can get that you can get that that stun off of his reload. It's it's a little bit more of a appeal ability from Makoa's uh, ultimate. Maldamba, very topical. Mending Spirits, his alternative fire, uh, increased remote proximity distance from 1 to 1.5. So that's a little bit of a margin of error connecting that, that heal with somebody getting, a, you know, you're not exactly there. You, got, you get 50% more distance, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a buff, and I'm really excited to see how that turns out, especially in competitive. Now, Pip. Pip is getting a pretty, pretty sizable nerf, but he's still going to be good because he's Pip, and that's just the nature of the character. Now, Pip, side tanks four especially, uh, that reduces the cooldown from one to two to three to four. The cooldown reduction, I'm sorry, one to two to three to four to 0.5, one, 1 1.5, and two. So that is a little bit more leeway for Pip to not be constantly running everywhere, doing a little bit of damage and to everybody with that smithereens, especially smithereens four, getting those, the four ammo back for those, those auto attacks. He cannot just sit there and do whatever he wants for the... Uh, really long amount of time. So when it comes to uh, Evil Mojo, there was a bug there where uh, players who died while affected by Evil Mojo, the most fun ultimate in the game by far, would see their weapons while dead. That's fixed. That's gone. So you won't see your weapons anymore. Stop emailing me, emailing me about it. A lot of emails to me. Torvald, that shield. Even, even people in other departments that wouldn't know about the balance of the game know that shield is insane. Keeping everybody alive, keeping the tanks alive, keeping the, uh, the flank alive. 2,000 health on a 7-second cooldown was a bit, too, uh, a bit too strong, so we're increasing that cooldown from 7 seconds to 9 seconds. It's, it's, it gives a little bit more value to Kronos right away, and I think it, we're still going to see Kronos picked up. It's, he's very viable, especially in EU and NA, but we'll see how that turns out in competitive. Now, I don't know if you can hear the, uh, the sirens. But uh, but I think I think there's a guy here, and he's ready to be talked about, and that is Lex, the brand new champion yep. of Paladins, the Hand of Justice. Yes, once more, uh, it's new champion time, and uh, this one uh, is 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 a bit special. Um, you know, he's he's coming in. Uh, I think overall his his general theme that we want is he's a lawbringer. So uh, it's something we haven't really had in Paladins yet. We have knights, we have witches, um, we have hunters. Um, and, uh, and so the idea is that, that there's this tribunal, there's this order that basically is responsible, sort of like the Wild West in American history, of keeping law and order. And so he travels from area to area, and he is the law. Like, he is the... He is the law. He is. He is the, the, the judge, the jury, the executioner. Um, he is responsible for that righteous judgment and making sure that, you know, the, the outer areas of the realm, you know, stay within order and within the rule of the magistrate. The, Lex's order. It's his order. No, I mean, he's, he's part of an organization. So um, while he's definitely made a name for himself and uh, he, you know, he's, he's a legendary within his organization, um, he, he definitely is part of a sanctioned organization. Right. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you think about it, like, you know, he's got this, this you know, his, his armor, his coloration and everything else is representative of his yes. order. Uh, but it really comes down to the weapons. And that's one of the things from the development yeah. team uh, that we actually focused on for this champion. Because uh, you can, sorry, sorry to interrupt. You can see right away those dual magnums that they're so strong. That's right. And so um, usually when we start a champion, uh, we start with kind of what is that core. And for him, it is the fact that he is dual wielding these powerful pistols. Um, and so, uh, and then that not only became the core of his gameplay kit and what everything else is built around from a gameplay side, but also from an art standpoint and from a thematic and from a lore standpoint. And so uh, for this order, those are the things that matter. Those are his badge. Those are the things that, you know, if you touch them and you're not you know, part of the order, it's it's death instantly kind of thing. Uh, if he fell on the battlefield, they'd probably go in and get the pistols and leave the body. Um, that's yeah. how important these things are, and so we really gave those a lot of focus on the art side. So with this, we have the Magnum abilities. Everything pretty much comes from his Magnum. He has a dash that he can shoot from. And he has In Pursuit, perfect aim to your nearest target. You get six shots, 100% accuracy if they're not behind walls or, you know, running away. That's really good cleanup ability, I find. And Retribution... It is a mark you can see through walls, so that's uh, very fitting. And whenever you get kills, you get more gold the more kill streak you have currently. And then 
finally, his ultimate, uh, it's, it's exactly what you'd expect. It's called the law. And that is burst. I think we did fine. Hey, what's up, folks? Tom Battinger here. On behalf of everybody that took part, thanks for watching the caster. We really appreciate it. But if you want to dig even deeper and find behind the scenes action, some commentary, and all the other fun stuff, check out the caster's YouTube page, youtube.com slash the caster show. We definitely appreciate it, and we'll see you later.